Before we get into this video, I want to say a huge thank you to every one of you that is subscribed and watching all these videos. I just dove into the analytics and Chaos Gaming is growing. Thank you to everybody who is helping this channel grow. I truly appreciate you guys. Now, we often hear about games being rushed through development, right? And how much it hurts the end product, but that's not always the case. In fact, some of the best games of all time were barely in the oven for a year. Welcome to Chaos Gaming, everybody. Make sure you're following the page with notifications on, and we're going to be checking out some video games that were rushed right through development, but it actually ended up being perfect. They were awesome. Let me know which of these is your favorite. Drop a like, and let's start off with Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Now, this game, many people call it the best in the entire Sonic franchise. I'll let you guys determine that. Released for the Sega Genesis in 1992. Oh my gosh, where did the time go? Sonic 2 entered development in late 91. It was completed in less than a year. Now, despite this rush development, it was an improvement upon the original in every way. The levels, they were more deep, the graphics were better, there were more enemy types, more dynamic platforming, and there was actually a level editor. Did you know that? It was way ahead of its time. Sonic 2 was a giant success, and it helped solidify Sega as a main player in the gaming world. Unfortunately, uh, it's fallen off pretty hard since then, but it was fun while it lasted. Next up... Metroid Prime 2. Where's Metroid Prime 4? I feel like I talked about this quite a bit. The first Metroid Prime was released for the GameCube in 2002. It was met with critical acclaim and fantastic sales. Critics and gamers agreed that it was great. Gameplay, level design, exploration, soundtrack. So naturally, uh, it made perfect grounds for a new franchise. Nintendo quickly greenlit Metroid Prime 2. But the team only had about a year and a half to get it done. So according to interviews with developers... They didn't want to reuse assets from the first game, which meant they had to remake everything from the ground up on a new engine. Now, uh, this did make Prime 2 stand out from its predecessor. It also meant the team was fighting the clock even harder than they would have been. According to the game's producer, Metroid Prime 2 was only about 30% done three months before their deadline. Let me say that one more time. The game was only 30% finished with three months to go. Thankfully, the team pulled out a miracle somehow and got Prime 2 on store shelves in November of 2004. Many saw it as a slight step backwards from the original, but it was still a really, really good game. Next up, Super Smash Bros. Melee. Often considered to be the best fighting game esports of all time, Melee has a notoriously difficult development cycle due to the extreme time pressure from Nintendo and the insane ambition of the game's director, Sakura. Now, the team wanted to make Melee an improvement over the first game in every way possible, but the clock was ticking fast because Nintendo wanted the game ready to ship as a launch title for the GameCube. Melee was slapped together in 13 months, and the team somehow worked a miracle because not only was it a great game, but it's still considered to be one of the best, if not the best, in the series. Way more characters, way more moves, way better physics, way deeper combat, and, uh, I mean, the jump from Smash 64 to Smash Melee is staggering. Next up, any Marvel fans out there... The Punisher 2004. I've brought this game up a few times, and I always think people aren't giving it the attention it deserves, so here it is again. Released in 2005, The Punisher is a third-person action game loosely based on the 2004 Punisher movie, but with a lot more fan service thrown in it from the comics. The game features lots of cameos from other Marvel favorites, while also getting Thomas Jane returning to provide the voice of Frank Castle. The Punisher garnered a lot of controversy for its violence, and it actually had to be censored in order to avoid that AO rating, and despite being rushed through development like most movie games are, it was actually good. It's worth a playthrough if you can grab an emulated copy. I mean, it's it, it's good. Next up, Halo 2. One of the most infamously rushed games that you would never have thought, it had some big shoes to fill. And while it didn't fulfill Bungie's original vision, it changed gaming forever. Released in 2004, Halo 2 continued the story of Combat Evolve while improving upon the combat with things like dual wielding, multiple characters, faster health regen, and a lot more enemies. Halo 2 also introduced us to Xbox Live, which completely changed console multiplayer forever. However, a lot of you probably know that much of Halo 2 was cut during development due to extreme time constraints from Microsoft. According to Bungie developers, the campaign was originally going to be more in double in its length, and there was tons of other weapons and enemies they wanted to add, just not enough time. They had to hit deadlines and make sure the Xbox Live multiplayer was up and running on launch day. So a lot of corners had to get cut, but we still got one of the best games of all time. Now we've reached number five, Call of Duty 3. Now, a lot of people don't really like Call of Duty 3, but you can't really call it a straight up bad game. In fact, back in the day, it was considered really good. When you look back at it with modern lenses, it's easy to see where it fell short, but taken it on its own, 
pretty solid. Did you know this game was rushed to you like you wouldn't believe? COD 3 was the first COD game to be developed by Treyarch, and they had to get it in and out of the oven in eight months. They had to write a story, craft a campaign, and create an entire multiplayer for a game coming out on five different consoles in eight months. So upon release in 2006, it was met with positive reviews. The gameplay, the sound design, it was one of the best-selling games of that year. So yes, COD 3 may not be your favorite in the series, and heck, you may have, you probably never even played it. But for a AAA game thrown together in eight months, I'll take it. Let's stick with Call of Duty. Black Ops Cold War. Now before you dislike the video, let me explain. I made it very clear on my main channel. I'm not really a fan of this game's multiplayer. However, I think the campaign and zombies are excellent, getting better, and that's why it gets a spot. Black Ops Cold War is perhaps the most hectic COD development to date. Now, nothing is officially confirmed. It started with Sledge. Uh, supposedly, it was going to be a Vietnam War era game, and then supposedly in 2020, Activision wasn't pleased, so Treyarch took over. You guys know the whole thing, right? Then we got the pandemic. It was crazy. I mean, the zombies, massive improvement for the series. Really, really good stuff. Great stuff. And now Black Ops Cold War may not be your favorite game, but it's pretty amazing what Treyarch was able to pull off in less than a year and during a pandemic. Props to them. At number three, Fallout New Vegas. Now, often considered to be the, one of the best RPGs of the 2000s, it was basically a side project that Bethesda handed off to a new developer in order to capitalize on the success of Fallout 3. Bethesda developed and published Fallout 3. It was one of the biggest games of 2008. They knew they had a hit on their hands, but wanted something else to hold fans over till their next big release, which was Skyrim. So to keep fans busy between Fallout 3 and Skyrim, Bethesda hired Obsidian Entertainment to slap together a Fallout spinoff. Now, what they probably weren't expecting was the spinoff to be better than theirs. Fallout New Vegas was developed in just a year and a half, which is a ridiculously short amount of time for an open world RPG. Obsidian did use a lot of assets from Fallout 3, but that actually gave them extra time to fine tune the story and the dialogue, which were the best parts of New Vegas, honestly. The game was a huge success, both critically and financially, and it's only gotten better with age. Back in the day, there was a huge debate over whether Fallout 3 or New Vegas was better. I think everybody will agree, New Vegas is king. At number two, Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Now, we may be going back to Vice City in GTA 6, but did you guys know the, the first time we went there, it only got worked on for about nine months? GTA Vice City was released in October of 2002, and it blew people away. GTA 3 had already established Rockstar as a great developer and a pioneer of open world gaming, but Vice City was really the game that cemented their formula. According to interviews with the staff, Vice City's development started early 2002, which gave the team about nine months to put it together. Now, despite that being a short time to develop such a massive game, Vice City was a masterpiece. It's still considered by many to be the best in the series. Giant world, great characters, good writing. It, it, it's, it's crazy to think they put it together in less than a year. And at number one, Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. One of the greatest games ever made. Had a very interesting development cycle, and honestly, it really should ha not have resulted in such a good game. Majora's Mask was released in 2000 for the Nintendo 64. It was a follow-up to Ocarina of Time, so expectations through the roof. A lot of people didn't think there was any way that Nintendo could live up to their previous masterpiece, but the team was committed. According to interviews with the staff, work on Majora's Mask was completed in one year after Nintendo worked for four years on Ocarina of Time. They didn't want to keep fans waiting like that, so they rushed Majora's Mask as quickly as they could, which actually led to a lot of new mechanics being implemented. It launched to critical acclaim. The story, the soundtrack, the gameplay, the darker tone, everything. It was awesome. Fans debate now whether or not Ocarina or Majora are the better game. I'll let you guys decide. There you have it. Those are some rush games that actually ended up being really good. Hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you soon.